29. And uh, they're a, a large uh, e-commerce provider based in Greenville, South Carolina. And they help with uh, the design, uh, building, and hosting of cloud-based customer service automation portals. So B2B e-commerce websites, and they integrate with uh, the existing ERP solution. And in this case, it's Sage 100. Uh, so thank you so much, Darcy, for being with us. And we have one software solution. They're a Sage OEM partner. They're a leader in the WMS space for Sage 100 since 1989. Uh, they meet the needs of thousands of distribution and manufacturing companies. And they provide that integration with, uh, with iOS, Android devices, and Windows devices out there in the warehouse. Uh, st we have Starship with us. They're a market leading leader for shipping software uh, for Sage 100. They're a gold development partner. They also have integrations with 500 and X3 on the Sage side. Uh, they've been helping Sage customers since 1989, um, and they have experience with all of the Sage products, just like I said. Uh, they also integrate um, with many of the market leaders from an EDI standpoint, like True Commerce and Mapadoc. Uh, so they're very established. And uh, thank you so much, Caroline, for being with us. Uh, we also have American Payment Solutions. Patty Benitez will be uh, uh, showing the American Payment Solutions customer service portal for credit card processing. The great thing about American Payment Solutions is they have great rates. And so if you want to save money on your credit card processing solutions, I recommend you take a look at what they can offer to save a lot of money uh, uh, in processing those credit cards. They have the relationships with the banks that um, help them execute cost savings on the credit card processing side. And we have Sage Inventory Advisor, Russ Graff, with us. Um, they're a cloud-based application that enables companies to accurately forecast future demand of products and place optimal purchase orders in minutes. So they have a dashboard that provides um, all the detail in, into the health of your entire inventory. So here's the workflow that we're going to be discussing today. Uh, website Pipeline will be talking about how a customer service person or a end um, customer can go onto the web and place an order and have that order interact with Sage 100. And that will go into sales order entry, populate the sales order for Sage 100, where one software solution can pick up all the details of the order from Sage 100 so that it can optimize the picking and packing with those mobile devices in the warehouse. And so that will indicate all the information back into Sage 100, uh, including package, dimensional weight, all the criteria that Starship would need to automate the shipping of that uh, package. So it, Starship will pick the, the most optimum carrier based on the size of the package, location of the customer, the cost savings, all the rules that you as a Sage 100 customer would want to use to pick the best carrier to fulfill that order. And all of the information would go back into accounts receivable on the Sage 100 side automatically where if the customer chose to use credit card processing, then American Payment Solutions will get the best rate for that particular um, order. And then uh, Russ will come in with Sage Inventory Advisor and make sure all your purchase orders are met to fulfill the order and inventory forecasting so that the customer demand is uh, met. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and pass it along to Darcy to uh, talk about Website Pipeline. Thank you so much, Darcy. Okay, thanks, Adrienne. Great lineup. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Um, so just first off, right off the bat, if you heard e-commerce and you're thinking, this doesn't apply to me because I don't sell products online, I'm asking, please don't tune me out just quite yet. I kind of want to reframe the conversation a little bit beyond e-commerce to customer and rep self-service. So today's consumer, whether they're buying for their own personal consumption or for their business's consumption or for resale, they are expecting more of a modern experience than the typical phone, fax, snail mail, snail mail and email when they're interacting with their vendors. So 
with a Sage integrated website pipeline self-service portal, your customers and your reps can interact and transact with you online 24 seven. So most people, when you think about e-commerce, you think about um, websites and shopping carts and things of that nature. And of course we can handle all those things, but really where a lot of the magic comes in is in the cloud-based customer and rep self-service tools that we offer. So um, I'm hoping you'll, you're all seeing my screen. If you can see this graphic, um, you know, we're looking at the, I'm going to turn on this laser pointer. This is kind of cool. So um, <laughs> over here, you've got your Sage data and it's all kind of locked up in your ERP. And um, in this visual, think of this tool in between here as the sync tool or the integration piece. Um, between your Sage and a cloud-based portal that your customers and reps can access. And it has bi-directional integration and syncs about every 60 seconds. So I want to get you guys thinking a little bit um, about some of the data that you might have that's locked up over here in your Sage ERP that maybe could be made available in the cloud to your customers and sales reps to help make it easier for them to do business with you. So an obvious example would be like a public web store, right? So let's picture this guy over here and he's He's, logged, he's just come to your website and uh, he sees all your products out there and he can see pricing and, and anytime you make a change over here in Sage, within 60 seconds those changes to the product description or the pricing or whatnot are reflected on the website. And anytime he places an order or does anything like that, it's going to sync back into Sage within about 60 seconds. So that's a really obvious example of how you might use this tool. However, there's a lot more beyond just web stores and public web stores that we offer. And so I just want you to keep in mind this visual of this being sort of the sync tool that we offer. And we're going to talk about some different uses over here where we see that data being used. So I um, have this really... Oh, oh. My next is not working. Oh, I have this really awesome cloud diagram and I'm not going to bore you with it today. So, um, but this is really awesome, exciting technology and I'm happy to get into this in detail with you. But this is just essentially what I showed you, only really um, detailed. So happy to go over this with anyone one-on-one, -on -one, but we don't really have a lot of time for all the details. Just so You're just going to have a little faith in the magic here. Um, but I want to tell you about some different ways that people use our technology. So the first one is we sell that as a sync tool only. So uh, I can't tell you how many times, probably almost daily, someone comes to me, either a Sage user or their partner, and says, hey, okay, we just went out and we got this e-commerce platform. Uh, maybe it's Magento or Shopify or maybe it's something homegrown or something designed for them by a marketing company. And um, it's standing alone. Our customers can use it, but it's not integrated with Sage. Well, that can be really complicated and tricky, but we can help with that. So we're experts in Sage. Most of our business is Sage, and most of that business is Sage 100. So we have a lot of experience in integrating tools with Sage. So we can make that available to you if you have some other type of platform that you really like. Another place where we see a lot of customers using our data, if you don't sell a physical product, or your product is not something that's conducive to selling online, your customers still might want to interact with you online, we can provide you with an AR portal. So basically we can add a login area to your website that matches the look and feel where your customers can go in and view their invoices, they can make payments, they can view aging, um, doing all that online. The payments can be integrated with American Payments, which Patty will talk about later, um, and all, it, all with bi-directional integration with Sage. So you're you know, I don't know how about you guys, I never write checks and mail them to pay my bills. Um, pretty much pay everything online. I'm sure you're probably the same, and I'm sure your customers are probably used to that as well. So it's better customer experience and also potentially speeds up cash flow. Another use that we see a lot of is a B2B portal. So for our customers that really only sell to other businesses, whether it's for consumption or for resale, uh, it's a different model than a typical B2C shopping cart situation. Um, so B2B customers, a lot of our customers already have a website, but they let their customers, they put a login area that's a customer login or dealer login or whatever they want to call it. Um, when they log into that area, it matches the look and feel of their website and their customers can go in, they can view product information, they can view inventory levels, including um, they can view customer specific pricing, they can view their orders, track their shipments, place orders, make payments, etc. We also offer, because some of our customers want their product information available for search, so people can find them, but then they only want them to be able to interact with them through the portal, so we have that configuration. 
And of course, we also offer a B2C shopping experience. I'm going to show you some of this in action, but um, just want to kind of frame the different possibilities out there. Everybody's business model is going to be different. Um, we can handle all these different configurations. So some customers want the public to be able to buy from them, but they also want that portal functionality. And then finally, all of these scenarios can be made available to your sales reps. So picture your sales rep out in the field with their mobile device. They can log in through a browser. And if they're about to visit a customer, they can pull up that customer's information. They can view their past purchases, their total sales volume, their open invoices, all designed to help them sell more to those customers. So with that, I am going to try to get out of there and go to here. And what we're seeing here on the screen is, is basically our sample site. It's kind of how all of our websites are born. This example is actually a B2C public site, so right now I'm not logged in anywhere. I just went to widgetco.com, or maybe I googled Han two-drawer letter, and it took me and found, brought me here. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to click on this particular item here, and all of this information about the pricing and the description, and et cetera, comes from Sage. So if you go make a change to any of that in Sage, within 60 seconds, it's going to be updated on the website. Wish I could show you that. It, it's, it's really cool. It's amazing how simple it is. Um, but what I'm seeing here is, is public pricing, $67. But I can also see the list price of $80. That's all coming from Sage. So I could add this to my cart, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take you now from the B2C environment. I'm going to take you into the B2B environment. Um, so I'm going to sign in. Now, once I sign in, if I go to that Han, that same product, that same item, I still see that list price, but now I'm seeing my price, my negotiated price, because we replicate the pricing logic from Sage on the website. So customer-specific pricing, we can have inventory levels reflected here if you choose to, um, and, and you're going to hear from my co-presenters a little bit more about how you can make sure those inventories or levels are accurate so you feel comfortable displaying them, and, and um, ScanCo and Inventory Advisor are going to talk more about those areas. Um, <clears throat> Sage is a really great ERP, but it's not a good e-commerce system. And so, so as much as we'd love to have everything on your website coming from Sage, we do provide you with a content management system. So if you need longer descriptions or you want to upload things like product details or instructions or different images, you have all the power to do that on your own. So anyhow, now that I'm logged in, again, I'm in the B2B environment, and you're going to notice it looks a little different from that public facing. And that's because over the years, we found that B2B customers, really, they don't want all those bells and whistles and videos and blinking lights. They want to get in here, and they, they want to do what they're supposed to be doing in here and, and move on. And so most these first four buttons are basically around shopping and ordering. So they can search and browse for products. I can come in here, and I can either do a gallery or a list view. I can search for anything with Han in it. Um, there's my two drawer and then same shopping experience I saw before where I would just click on it and go ahead and add it to the cart. Um, but some other ways that we can do it as well is I can do favorites lists. So if I am Pat and I always order the same kind of items from Widget Co, I can set up a favorites list that contains all those items and I just come in here and add the quantities that I need of each of those items and add it right to my cart from here. And one other way that we can shop is just bulk adding to cart. So this kind of mimics maybe if they were used to entering it all in a spreadsheet and then emailing that in or faxing it in. Yes, people still use fax machines to a surprising, alarming degree these days. Um, this might be more what they're used to, where we just kind of come in and we enter in the SKU and, and pick what we want, and we can keep adding quantities to there. It's already been added, but I can continue and I can add these to my cart. So those are kind of the shopping experiences. Before I go back and talk about some of those other, other buttons on there, I'm going to go ahead and do the checkout process. So um, I'm going to proceed to checkout. And the system already knows me, so it fills in all my address and information. I can modify that if needed. I'm not going to in the interest of time. And then it's going to bring me into the order confirmation window and show me all the different items and everything that's on here. It's got taxes we integrate with Avalero or with your um, rate tables in Sage, shipping methods, etc. If you're using APS, you're going to have some different options here for payments. Again, I'm going to let Patty talk more about how we seamlessly integrate with American Payment Solutions. In this particular case, I'm a customer that's allowed to be invoiced, so I can come in here and put in an invoice number, I mean, excuse me, a PO number, and I can go ahead and place that order. 
Once that order processes, I'm going to get taken to a confirmation window. I'm going to receive a confirmation email, and within 60 seconds or so, that's going to create a sales order in Sage. Just a couple more things I want to show you. So I'm going to hand it off in just a minute to my co-presenters, and they're going to talk about what's going on back at the office after this happens, right? This order is going in. Somebody is going, it's going to the warehouse. There's going to be shipments happening. There are, there are parts that are making sure we have all the necessary inventory levels, and all my co-presenters are going to talk about those things. But as I'm the customer, I'm Widget Co's customer, I don't see all that going on. But what I can do is I can come back in here later and say, well, what is going on with my order? And I can see all my orders, not just orders that were placed on the website, but all the orders because we're so tightly integrated with Sage, I can see any orders that are in Sage and I can see their status and drill down to the detail. I can also track shipments. So I can come in here and see my shipments and tracking information. This is coming from the data that Starship's gonna tell you about in a few minutes. And if I had some Starship data in here, I could link on these and actually click to the tracking information right from here. So I'll, I'll kind of work in together there. Um, we can track open and paid invoices, and I can also come in here and pay invoices now. Um, and that's this is basically what it looks like when you're in our AR portal only functionality is just, hey, come and see all my invoices and make payments. So um, I want to make sure and be respectful of the time of my co-presenters. That's kind of my quick, uh, 10 minute little overview and I could go on for days, but um, my presenters and some of even you might kill me. So thank you so much for your time and I look forward to answering any questions that you might have. Hey Darcy, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Hey everyone, Adrian, appreciate the, uh, the great introduction as always. You. Uh, uh, you, you really build me up, so now I have to meet all these great expectations. But I, I'm Ross over at uh, One Software, and uh, just a quick, brief background on One Software is it's a uh, it's a joint partnership between uh, Scanco Distribution slash Manufacturing, formerly JDB Associates, with Work Order Scan, and then our great partners at ACS Multibin, and uh, together we've uh, created quite the uh, the fine-tuned automation product. So between all the companies. Uh, combined, I think it's well over 60 years plus of uh, experience. We all been uh, a Sage uh, in the Sage partnership, uh, OEM with Sage for oh, about over 20 years apiece. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the automation of the picking and packing product, right? So uh, as Dar Darcy so showed earlier with with the website pipeline, you've now automated the process of uh, collecting the orders from your website, getting in the system, immediately going to Sage. Now you have a sales order. Terrific, great. Now what? So uh, a lot of a lot of companies before the automation process uh, uh, have come to us that have now decided to, to automate the process because the manual method of doing things by pen and paper and chisel and stone and post-it notes just really wasn't flying. Um, there was a lot of you know past discrepancies. They they weren't they weren't getting the great supplier uh, you know end user relationship uh, that they like. Why? Because we'd had missed orders. Um, if, if it's for larger customers like Targets or Walmarts, et cetera, uh, those people fine. If you have run order ship to them, even if it's one item off, one widget off, you're getting a nasty fine for that late order. So a lot of that wasn't boding well for them, right? And these are companies that have been around for a long time, and, uh, and the pen and paper method just wasn't doing it for them anymore. So they decided to want to automate that process. And the nice thing about uh, our product, just to mention, is um, you know one of the hurdles that we have is you know benefiting the ROI, right? Well, once that's been determined, uh, the other one is 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 a lot of people are hesitant to ditch that pen and paper, right? So the beauty uh, of all of our modules that we incorporate directly into Sage is that they they can be added on at any given time. So it's a very you know bolt on when ready product. Uh, so today our products are about uh, the picking and packing, right? So we we have the order. Um, now we want to implement the corrective actions, right? So now that's going to be automating the process. And then we have ways to monitor and maintain those actions so they stay in place. So once the, uh, once the order's in the system, um, we do have a direct integration in the Sage through the barcode module, right? So all of, so once the order's created, now we have to go collect and commit it on the Scanco side, right? So we built that very seamless integration through the barcode module. And now we're going to go over, you know, one of the largest draining of, of dollar figures is, is the inefficiencies, right? So now we're going to correct that with the automating process. And we do that through several different methods. Um, so a lot of the benefits of the implementation are, are 
such as you know the directed picking. So you have a sales order and you have to look at how do I want to ship it? Do I want to um, uh, instantaneously uh, ship it through just sales order, shipping data entry, invoice data entry? Yes, we have that covered. Um, or do you want to split it up? Let's say the order comes on a Monday, I'm ready to ship it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So now I'm going to do more of a split picking and packing functionality. Great, we got that covered too. Um, as far as the uh, you know the wave, um, as far as the ACS implementation goes with us, the multi-bin aspect, right? So you have either a non-multi-bin or a multi-bin aspect. So non-multi-bin in Sage allows you to have one item to one bin. And what's nice about the uh, multi-bin process is you can have several different bins. You can have a Monday shipment bin, a Tuesday shipment bin, et cetera. Okay, so we have that through a lot of our enhanced capabilities through uh, multi-user shipping, uh, a complete pick, pack, and ship process. Um, we also have a complete wave batch process that allows you to bundle orders together, split lines, assign different users. Um, if you're doing nothing but shipping on pallets, do you want to use a pallet activity called license plating? Um, we even have something called quick ships to ship out the door. And then also we're, we're tied in with, uh, if you have to do ASN labels and you have MapaDoc, um, we have a complete MapaDoc integration too that allow you to um, process and trigger the ASN label process, okay? So once we've determined which method benefits you, like I said, a lot of these are bolt-on, you can choose which ones you want. If you own them all, you can shut them off, make them specific to certain users. So we really can narrow down that process to uh, split that process up and make each person do the task at hand and only the task at hand. So if we walk through the process, I have sales order. I have to now determine how I want to ship it. So I want to pick and pack it or just pick, pack, and ship it. So I want to choose the box level detail or do I want to just create an invoice and send it through? So once you've determined how you want to collect those items, um, we do have one other capability is how you want to assign those. Are you a large enough uh, company where you have multi-users on the floor? Do you want to assign different functionalities to those users, the orders they're going to ship? Do you want to track what they're doing and see how long it takes them to do it so you can really hone in and fine-tune your shipping process to make it as streamlined as possible? Well, we have that through um, a, a capability called our dashboard, which lets you see everything that's happening in the present. You can build history and analytics off the past. Um, which helps you better track for how you're going to do things in the future, right? Um, and then we have assigned to orders. Do you want to um, instantaneously, an order comes in the top, it has to ship right away. Instead of having to go and page someone on the floor or get off your desk and go find them, we have an instant messaging utility that lets you uh, instant message users on the floor for the orders that you've assigned to them. So between that whole process, you're now able to analyze who's doing the shipping, how it's being shipped, and track orders. That way, if there's any uh, uh, error of a discrepancy in, in that you might get from a from your end user, where well, you can go in and track that process to see who shipped it, when they shipped it, how they shipped it, and then actually find out if it was misshipped or somehow got lost along the line getting to them on the other end. Now I'm going to actually go into some of the actual shipping process. Terrific. So as I noticed, that now I have my handheld brought up, right? So we went over a, a few brief slides to talk about how we actually pick and pack and how we can do it. Well, now I've actually brought up the, the actual end user handheld and how they'll function. So all of our shipping is going to be concentrated between this truck here and this picking application here. So the picking application uh, for actual picking allows us to do several different things. Um, if we want to actually pick and process the order where we're actually picking and staging, then we have three different methods. You have wave picking, order picking, and quick picking. Uh, the wave picking functionality allows you to bundle multiple orders together. Um, we have single order picking, which we'll demonstrate today, uh, which these are both directed. They tell you where to go and what to pick. And then we have the quick picking functionality that's more of a freestyle of the users uh, choose where they want to go. Uh, confirm picks allows you to confirm allocations. Uh, invoice picks and ship picks allow you to send things straight through to invoice or shipping data entry without having to scan the items a second time. And then the wave batch functionality allows you to 
um, allocate orders, split them up by region, by line, by bin, etc. So the order picking functionality, um, once you've chosen your warehouse, and once you've chosen your staging bin, and now you've chosen your sales order that you're going to be shipping, okay, it's going to give you some information on the lines and the order of warehouses, what you can pick, etc. And now I've got on my order that there's five of this particular order, and now it's going to tell you how many to pick and how many you have picked. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my quantity. Scan the item to confirm it. The nice thing too is if you scan the run item, it's going to tell you that you scanned a run item on the order. So that's where our, not only our automation portion comes in, but the validation and that you're actually doing the correct item. That way something's not mispicked or misshipped. Where before, if you're doing that by pen and paper, uh, you might have missed that. Now it's going to make you select a lot. In this case, I have a lot of items. Uh, serialized, we collect two. And now we're going to go ahead and enter our quantity in that we're shipping. We're going to go ahead and send that back in a stage. And now we're ready to ship it. So once it's been picked, it's only been picked. It hasn't been shipped out yet, hasn't been committed in through Starship where they're going to pick it up. It's only been picked. Now I'm going to ship it. And now you can actually choose to do ship pick, which will only ship the line items that you've done. We'll go ahead and do that today. So I go ahead and choose my shipper ID. Go to my sales order tab. Choose the sales order that I was just picking. It's going to ask me if I'm ready to ship this through. I hit OK. And now I've done a complete picking, collection, and shipping of the order. Now, in real time with the barcode module running, our, um, it's going to go right back in the stage into this case shipping data entry, where my good friends at V Technologies will pick up from here. Great. Thanks, Ross. You're welcome. This is Caroline for V Technologies. Um, one second. I'm just going to show you my screen so we can move on through this process. So um, once you've picked and packed the order, just as Ross had showed you, um, you're ready to ship it, obviously. Um, this is the Starship screen. Um, we're going to be connected directly to the invoice information that the One Solution has created, um, and also pulling from that shipping data entry um, transaction table to grab all the item and box level information. So I just um, brought in the order. Um, that was used or shipped against. Um, and in this case, when I bring this up, you'll see Starship's telling me that um, I need to validate this address, and there seems to be a zip plus four error here. So Starship will give you the ability to validate zip plus four residential commercial. Um, and it will also uh, give you secondary validation, both with UPS and FedEx, on that residential flag, uh, just to make sure that you're not uh, getting additional chargebacks in that area. So once I bring this invoice in, um, you'll see down here in the packaging view, if I expand this information, the item to box level information, this is what would have been defined on the handheld using the one solution. So nothing really needs to be done from the shipper at this point. Um, if the shipper wanted to do a rate shop, we could do that. I just want to show you some functionality here real quick. When we do a rate shop, we're going to rate shop all the available carriers um, that you've licensed within the application. So this can be a combination of both small package and LPL carriers, like you'll see here. If you ever are on the cusp of maybe going uh, regular ground or ground freight or 100 weight or um, small LPL shipment, we'll give you the ability to quickly see the charges um, that are going to be imposed for that particular shipment that's on the screen. These charges reflect the negotiated rate that you have with the carrier. So we're communicating directly with all the carriers to get your negotiated rate um, in real time. If I quickly wanted to sort on any of these, I could. And maybe I want to look at delivery. And I'll see here that I can get my package there on Thursday for a lot less going UPS ground. That, this whole process of selecting least expensive method um, you know, to get it there by a certain date can also be automated through something that we call our ship via rule. And this is just a manual way of showing you how that gets done. So I'm going to select UPS ground on this particular um, shipment and I go ahead and process it. 
I can just hit F5 or hit this little button here. Starship's going to generate the barcoded shipping labels. It's going to communicate out to the carriers, and it'll also update stage in real time. This is an example of our combination packing list plus shipping label on the 8.5 by 11. This output can also be printed directly to a thermal label printer. So if you wanted to, you could have the shipping label followed by the packing list. You just have two labels per box. Or you could go with the more traditional method of printing the thermal label and then packing list to um, 8.5 by 11. Ross also made a quick mention there of, uh, you know, accuracy for trading partners and Mapadoc. Um, and just so you know, Starship does have integration to um, a couple of EDI solutions in the Sage space. Um, we have direct integration with Mapadoc as well, and, and um, also True Commerce if there are any True Commerce users out there. So Starship can generate um, the shipment file that would go directly to those EDI solutions to help automate the generation of the ASN. You can also print the 128 label out of Starship if you wanted to. If you weren't doing that through the one solution. Um, if you were to do that, you would get the shipping label, packing list, um, and the, um, the 128 label at the same time to go on that box as you're shipping. In addition, I know there's a lot of drop shipping happening these days, um, especially with some of those uh, larger trading partners that are no longer holding on to your inventory. Um, for that packing list that you saw, you can create as many templates as you want. Maybe you want to generate a packing list that's specific to Wayfair with all the Wayfair information on it and to superimpose your Sage data onto that particular template. Starship can also do that for you so that you don't have to have um, any thought involved with which packing slip and making sure that you're getting the right output for the right shipment. OK, I just want to go back into Sage real quick and take a look at that invoice that was updated. I'm going to invoice data entry here. So this was that sales order um, that we processed. If I click on the tracking information, now Starship has updated the um, package table with the appropriate tracking numbers. And also on the totals tab, we've updated the freight amount here. This freight amount can also include um, automatic calculations of handling fees. Um, we have something called freight rules that will allow you to define how and when it gets written back. So if you wanted to create parameters based on page fields um, for determining the calculation, you can do that. For example, if you wanted to provide free freight for orders over 200, you can um, put that freight rule in Starship. And then this freight amount would automatically be generated here, which would help with the uh, accounts receivable process. Okay, before I turn it over, just wanted to show you one other thing that Starship can do for you as a result of the shipment. Um, basically, automatically generate the email for you. A lot of our customers are utilizing emails that were generated through the carrier application or the carriers. Um, and those emails obviously have all the carrier uh, marketing within there. But when you're using Starship's email notification to generate these um, shipment notifications, you can you know, give your customers a lot more insight into the shipment, as well as you know, help from a marketing perspective on your side. So obviously, you can put your logo into the body. You have total control over the look and feel of the contents of this email. Um, but you can also impose any um, stage field directly into either the subject. So maybe the PO number um, would be a really good reference for your customers to see and know what the shipment's about. And then in the body of this email, you'll notice we are taking advantage of you know, the combination of information that's um, generated through the handheld and then the Starship um, tracking information on top of that to give your customers that extra level of detail of knowing all the packages that are going to them, as well as all the items in those boxes and the quantities that were shipped. You can also send them back to your website for repeat business maybe with a little promo code. And you have the ability to create as many templates as you want, um, and then create rules around those templates on when they're being used. So if you wanted to have a special promo under certain circumstances, um, you could do that, and it would create, Starship would generate the appropriate email at the appropriate time. 
Okay. With that, I'm going to pass it on to Patty, who's going to show you how to get paid on the shipment. Thank you, Caroline. Um, and thank you to Adrian for helping us coordinate this. So I just wanted to point out the fact that um, the solutions that we are presenting today, uh, website pipeline, one software with Scanco, Starship, and Inventory Advisor, not only give you the opportunity to provide a, a, much, a much more modern interaction with your customers, but also to have your internal process become much more accurate, faster, and definitely easier. Um, with Website Pipeline, you are able to pre-authorize transactions, and the pre-authorizations with the Integration to American Payment Solutions are now valid anywhere between 7 and 30 days. You actually get to choose between 7 and 30 days. You're not limited to the 7 days. You can also pre-authorize, or uh, it depends on, on your choice, pre-authorize through Starship in um, shipping data entry. And once again, you have the ability to extend that pre-authorization anywhere between 7 and 30 days. I do want to point out that um, American Payment Solutions is a full-service merchant provider. We offer level three processing through our Sage 100 integration. Many people are not familiar with level three processing. And I do want to point out the fact that the partners that are presenting today actually help us to provide our merchants with the best rates. Level three processing is a program that was put in place by Visa and MasterCard, where with, when we provide certain required fields, 13 to 16 required fields, Visa and MasterCard guarantee the very lowest rate. The rate can go down anywhere from the original 2.65 down to 1.85. And if a transaction is more than seven to $10,000, the rate can actually go down to 0.05%. We've automated the level three process with the connection to website pipeline, one software, Starship and inventory advisor in, in the sense that we actually take the fields that all of these different products delivered to Sage, and we send them to Visa and MasterCard. Therefore, we guarantee that our merchants, without having to take any extra steps, will actually receive the very lowest rates available. Now, what I'm doing right now is processing a credit card transaction. I'm actually pre-authorizing it. You can turn off the validation code requirements and simply bypass the field, but notice how we are referencing the sales order number from Sage and the amount. If shipping data entry, if we were doing this through shipping data entry, you would have to do nothing different. Everything is very straightforward within Sage. We will verify any information that was provided, whether it was provided through website pipeline or directly in Sage. And at this point, you can actually stop the user in his or her tracks if the information is not a match. Or as part of setup, you can allow them to continue with the transaction. In my case, I continued with the transaction. I now am able to show you a transaction ID. And this transaction ID is actually coming from our portal. Now, my presentation is very straightforward. This is the APS portal. And my presentation will conclude in just a few seconds because I'd like to show you where the transaction ended up. And mind you, I processed it within Sage. Notice how we will give you a bird's eye view of the transaction. If you click on the transaction ID, you will be able to see full detail down to the very line level detail of the invoice itself. We offer next day funding. In most cases, processors will say that and what they mean is 24 hour funding. You will have the funds available in your bank account within 12 hours. If you batch out, say for example, by 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, by 9 a.m. the next morning, you will have the funds available in your bank account. We do not charge for the credit card processing module installation, implementation, training, or support. We also provide the equipment at no charge. And for those of you that have joined the webinar today, please put everything down and listen to this one part of the webinar for now. Um, we are offering a special promotion to those who attended the webinar. If you are interested in any of the solutions that are being presented today, all you have to do is allow us to analyze your statements, we will let you know within five minutes how much money we can save you, and I guarantee it will be more than $500 a year. 
and we will also be glad to provide you with an incentive to purchase these products as, as much as $500. So do not hesitate to give us the opportunity to analyze your statements and let you know what exactly, where exactly the fees are coming from, who's making the money where, and where there's room for savings with your current processes. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Inventory Advisor, Russ Graff. Hey, thanks, Patty. I appreciate that. So, on, uh, so I get the honor of being the, the final presenter here today. Let me just walk through a couple of quick slides to give you a feel uh, for uh, kind of where we're coming from. One big difference between what I'm going to talk about and what you've seen here so far is, is all the things we've talked about are very transactional. They're going on during the course of the day, live, taking orders, uh, processing credit cards, processing shipments, scanning product, and all those kinds of things. The Sage Inventory Advisor tends to be kind of an end-of-day process that sort of closes the loop from a purchasing and inventory replenishment standpoint. So what we're doing with Inventory Advisor is we're really trying to solve three issues. One, we want to eliminate excess inventory, which decreases the amount of working capital that's tied up in the warehouse, free that money up to spend elsewhere in the business, and save those carrying costs that are associated with that excess inventory can be substantial. Second, we want to make sure we don't run out of products. So we want to improve our customer fill rates, improve our customer service levels, retain those customers whenever possible. And then for the buyer or planner that has to manage those kind of two competing interests, we want to really save them a bunch of time, help them uh, create an optimal purchase order in very short order, and not spend all their time slicing and dicing data, maybe working in Excel or other custom reporting tools, trying to figure out where's my inventory, where does it stand, what do I need to do today to, uh, to optimize that. So one key point of, of information, I think, is how we think of inventory management. It's really two sides to the same coin. What we've heard from ScanCo and the one solution is really the physical management of the product. Right, uh, shipping and receiving, counting, maybe doing physical counts with my product, probably using some sort of barcode or handheld device, or now with smartphone uh, integration that the uh, One Solutions does. That's very important. I need to understand how much it, how much product I have, where it is, maybe even at a bin level, right? Using that the One Solution bin activity capability. So I really, that's very critical that I have accurate information there. But what it doesn't tell me is is it the right level of product at the right place at the right time. And that's really the flip side uh, of this coin, which is the inventory replenishment or optimization function. And so what we're gonna try to do with our application with Inventory Advisor is to bring a forecasting engine to bear, project that profile for future demand and, and look at lead time and forecast risk and all kinds of variables, do some very uh, heavy number crunching on your behalf uh, in the background and then present a solution that's actionable information for the buyer or planner to manage that inventory and to optimize that. And we really have designed it around answering two key questions. What needs my attention and what do I need to order? It's really where we tried to boil it down to make this really straightforward for folks. So what needs my attention implies that we're doing some sort of a status check. We're looking at the status of every item in every warehouse every single day and, and analyzing what's its status. It may be okay. It might be within my min and max levels that I've created and is projected to stay there for the immediate future, so life is good. If I've got a thousand SKUs, if I follow the 80-20 rule, maybe that's 800 of my items that are perfectly fine and I don't want to spend one ounce of energy or time or effort on those items that are in good shape. But the other 20%, the other 200 SKUs perhaps, uh, have some sort of uh, challenge associated with them. Either I'm already out of stock or I'm about to run out of stock based on our projections, or I have too much of that particular SKU, or I'm about to have too much when the next shipment arrives because I didn't need it yet. Or I may have forecasts that are not accurate. I'm either selling more or less than what I forecasted, and that has impacts or my suppliers are not performing up to speed, if their, uh, their lead times are not being met or they're short shipping me, and all those things have impact on my ability to serve my customers and manage my inventory. So to help answer those questions, we're going to do a product classification, looking at an ABC secret uh, level, uh, but we're also going to look at a, a velocity or speed of movement, uh, high, medium, low. And, and when we combine those two axes together, we're going to get this nice color-coded matrix that really helps us understand the characterization of every item in our inventory and then create risk and buying policies and standards and fill rates and so forth around those different uh, characteristics and different categories of product. And again, I already mentioned we're going to bring a forecasting engine to bear. We've got some 15 different algorithms 
built into our forecasting engine that are going to look at historic patterns of use and consumption of every item in every warehouse and then project the best fitting algorithm against that to, uh, to profile my future demand. And one of the big differences between how we operate and some of the other things you've seen today is, again, we're more of an after-the-fact sort of a batch process as opposed to a real-time. And from a planning standpoint, that's perfectly fine. Uh, that's typically how it's done, uh, maybe weekly or even daily. We're going to take a look at what's happened in my inventory and what do I need to now do about it, what do I need to purchase. So we're going to do it on a nightly basis. We're going to grab all the data files out of the back end of the Sage 100 application. We're going to look at sales information, warehouse information, purchase order information, bill of materials perhaps if you're doing any kitting or assembly work, and we're going to understand all that data. We're going to compress it and encrypt it and roll it up into our private cloud every single night on a nightly basis. We may be connected for a couple of minutes, then we're going to spend about 20 or 30 minutes crunching all the numbers, doing all that analysis that I'll show you the results of in a second, and we'll present that data to you really in information. It's no longer raw data that's scattered across eight or ten different files within your Sage 100 ERP application, but it's all aggregated into one great clean looking uh, uh, dashboard uh, that gives you all the performance metrics, all the recommendations that we make, all the projections that we're doing in our application, and put that in one easy browser-based environment. So any browser on any device, anytime, anywhere, so an on-demand application that really helps you understand uh, what the status of your inventory is. Sometimes we refer to that as a health check. It's, I think it's a good way to think of that. Um, and so we're going to really uh, present information that's actionable by the buyer and planner. Because again, remember that buyer and planner is dealing with those two competing interests. I want to have enough inventory to meet my demand as it's presented, but I don't want to have over, uh, warehouses overflowing with product that are costing me a lot of money and tying up capital. So if I log in as a user, I'm presented with this dashboard when I first come in. I've got nine different panels or key performance indicators, KPIs, on that dashboard. And I can look at it for one individual warehouse. I can look at it across an entire organization, subsets of warehouses that I can logically group. So there's lots of different ways that I can slice and dice what data is presented on the dashboard. Uh, I can look at it in terms of periods over time, 12 periods. Those could be weeks or months or days. Uh, I can look at a total... Uh, of all items or I can look at certain uh, suppliers or certain product classes. Uh, I already mentioned pops, possibly certain warehouses. So I've got the ability to slice and dice the data and what's presented to me here. And what I'm seeing are really these, these first six panels are really where most of the rubber meets the road. Uh, my first row is really looking at stock from a stock perspective. The second row more from a customer perspective. So as I look at this, here's my current stock holding. I can see where I started when I first installed the application, how I've done over the last 12 periods, and my most recent download of data. And I can see that currently I've got $10.4 million worth of inventory, but in a perfect world, my model, that's not, uh, the Sage Inventory Advisor product is telling me I could probably get by on $6.9 uh, million dollars worth of inventory. So I've got some room to improve here and I can see that I've got over three million dollars worth of excess stock represented by some 2100 items. What I'm seeing though underneath that is my top five list. So these are the top five items that are contributing the most to this problem. And I can see my top five SKUs represent almost 10 percent of my excess issue. So as a buyer planner, if I can solve these five today, tomorrow I get a fresh batch of another five, the next day another fresh batch. And if I do nothing but focus my attention on those five or maybe 10 or 15 items every day, I'm going to see these trend lines go exactly where I want them to. I'm going to see my excess stock and stock holdings going down. I'm going to see my fill rates going up, stock outs going down, etc. <clears throat> the last column here, a couple of proactive uh, uh, panels, if you will. One is I can see what orders that I have coming in, <clears throat> excuse me, that are going to contribute more to this excess stock problem. So I, we call those surplus orders. So I've got 411 items on order that are due to come in before I really need them, which is just going to make my excess stock problem worse. So maybe I can call my vendors and have them uh, hold up for a week before they ship it, maybe even cancel an order altogether, etc. And I can take a look at those. Uh, conversely, I have another 42 items that I'm projecting I'm going to run out of before the next replenishment arrives. So maybe those vendors I call and try to expedite something, especially the items that are most important to me. I talked about that classification. You'll notice here I've got some color coding. So an A item, 
is of course a more valuable item. And then the medium, low, or high items are the speed of movement. So here's an A medium item, a pretty important item to me. It's color coded in green that I am at risk of running out of that could cost me as much as $25,000 in sales based on our projections. So what I can do from here is I can drill right into that item, again, as a buyer or planner of that inventory, and I can come take a look at detailed information, what my replenishment uh, cycle looks like, what my safety stock needs to be, what are the risk factors associated with my forecast. I can look at a specific forecast. I can make adjustments to that forecast. So I've got all that, all that information at my fingertips that I can now make some decisions. Is that accurate? Is that good information? Do I need to expedite that order? Do I already have a PO coming in that I can expedite, et cetera? So lots of great information. And this dashboard is really designed to answer that first question. What needs my attention? What's out of whack? What's showing up on my top five list? that I can take some action on today and have the most immediate impact on my profitability in getting my inventory back into, into sync. Uh, the second question is what do I need to order? So we've got an order tab right on the top menu and as soon as I select a vendor that I would need to order from, the system's going to tell me here's a vendor that has items, at least one item, that needs to be ordered today based on our, all of our projections and our analysis. So in this case, I've got a vendor that has actually got 13 line items, and you can see in the lower box here on the right, kind of a summary table. And here are the 13 line items that uh, Inventory Advisor is recommending I purchase, and it's actually telling me which items and how much I need to buy. And it takes into account things like minimum order quantities or multiples if I need to be in, uh, buying in cases or multiples of 16. All that intelligence is built into the application. Again, I can drill into the detail if I need to look at that particular item. I can do that, but I get all kinds of great visual cues. I can see my last 12 months of sales or consumption activity, what that's projecting forward and uh, going forward. Uh, this is already an item that's stocked out, and I see, again, this is an AM item, so it's a critically important item to me. I may have others on hand in other warehouses, so maybe I could move them from another location, but it looks like I'm stocked out all over the enterprise, so I've really got an issue here. I better get this going, and in fact, given that situation, instead of the 80 that it's recommending, I might even bump that up and say I'm going to get 120 of those today. And as soon as I make that change, it redoes the math, right? It knows the unit cost of that. And it says on my summary table that I haven't added any new lines, but I've increased my quantity of units and the dollar value of that order. I've got all kinds of ability to manipulate, manage, and understand why it's on an order recommendation. I've got the ability to add additional items if I want to top off a container that's maybe coming from China or Europe, and, and I want to be efficient with my shipping costs and so forth. I can, I can manage all that again, and as soon as I click download, it's going to download a data file that can then gets uh, imported or, or posted back into the ERP into Sage 100 as an open purchase order. So as I've captured all those transactions that we heard about earlier today, right, I've got orders coming in through website pipeline, maybe through an EDI process, as well as some direct order entry. So I've got all this activity coming in. I've got product being shipped out. I've got other purchase orders being received at the dock. All these transactions coming in and out that are impacting my inventory during the course of the day. And at the end of the day, I get a refresh of this database and this dashboard. And now my buyer comes in the next morning and says, wow, what happened yesterday? All of a sudden, I've got something here on my uh, potential stockout list because somebody placed an order that I did not anticipate. It wasn't part of my forecast. I need to take some immediate action on that right now. So it's a, it's a really powerful tool that really replaces the need to do spreadsheets and manual processes, and it's extremely cost effective. We can literally implement this in a matter of a few weeks, uh, and, and you're live and running. You've got a dashboard typically within the first few days, and then we're doing some refinement, uh, a couple thousand dollars down and maybe two or three hundred dollars a month, and we could be saving you as much as fifty or a hundred thousand dollars a year in excess carrying costs and, and, uh, and lost sales because of having inventory that's out of balance. So hopefully that makes sense as a quick wrap up that kind of brings together and ties up all the loose ends of all those transactions that we talked about earlier today. So with that as a backdrop, I think I've concluded my, my thoughts and presentations. It looks like we have a few minutes left. If we want to go ahead and uh, go back to do any Q&A, Adrian, I'll let you uh, take it from here. Perfect. Thank you so much, Russ. Fantastic presentation, everybody. Um, I'm going to go ahead and flash up the contact information for everyone that was speaking today. Uh, we do have a couple questions. I'd like to launch a poll. Uh, while we're running through the questions. So I'm going to put a poll up on your screen. Um, and I have two polls, actually. 
So uh, we have a poll running. Are you currently using any of the following? If you could just indicate what you're uh, using, um, if you're using any of the, the solutions that we talked about today, um, this would be helpful for us. So thank you so much for taking us time out to answer this question. And Ross, I wanted to ask you about um, ScanCo and physical counts. And uh, yeah. one software solution and physical counts, if you could elaborate a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So let, let's talk briefly about that. I know we were, we were concentrating mainly on uh, today's information of the whole pick pack process, right? But as I mentioned, you know, any of our processes are, are, are bolt on. And uh, as, as Russ kind of really went in depth about that, the uh, process of knowing your product and where it's at and when it's at and when you need to reorder is great for the inventory advisor. But as far as keeping your product up to date and and, uh, and scan or uh, and Sage is very important too. So um, probably one of our most popular, you know, I, I call it our gateway. I guess it's the gateway into into automating, right? You you know you've never done it before. You're hesitant on automating just because you're pen and paper. Well, physical counts the best place to start just because it's so simple. Um, it lets you, you know, not only from, uh, not only does it integrate seamlessly back into uh, into Sage, but a lot of the benefits that we found are that, uh, you know, we've decreased normal physical count times that were manually done by 75%. Um, so you have to adjust less inventory, you have increased inventory accuracy, and you can you now even implement routine cycle counts. So once you've gotten the whole thing counted, right, let's do implement and cycle count, and then so we can you can freeze on the fly. Um, you can have multiple devices counting the same time. And then when you implement multi-bin, you can drill that process down even to a finite detail by counting certain bins at certain times of, of the month, the day, the year, um, and, and really implementing that. So it's, it's, uh, it's great for getting the taste of how to automate a warehouse. And then from there, you can go on to things like receiving and shipping and the picking and packing like we talked about today. Awesome. Okay. And then we um, have a question from Ken. Thank you so much, Ken, for your question. This question is for Darcy at Website Pipeline. Can customers enter their credit card number in and have it stored in Sage, or does someone have to enter that credit card information in AR customer maintenance from the office, then provide the ability for the customer to purchase in the future based on the stored credit card, or do they need to re-enter the credit card number again? Wow, okay, that was a mouthful. So that, I mean, and that's partially a Patty question, too. I, I'd like Patty to maybe chime in. We don't store the credit card information. So, um, you know, we're, we're sort of what Patty does with the pre-authorization can sort of mitigate that. Right, Patty, can you speak to that? Correct. Yes, Darcy. So what, what happens is um, you can enter credit card information in customer maintenance, and because we are PCI compliant, the information is stored in our secured vault. However, you do have access to the last four digits so that you don't have to rekey in credit card information every time you process a transaction. If the credit card information is entered within website pipeline, that information flows through into Sage and also into our secured vault. So you don't have to worry about the PCI compliance piece of it either. Perfect. Okay, so we have a question from Annalise. Annalise, thank you for your question. How do you get the box size loaded? And I believe that's both for you, Ross, and maybe for Caroline to elaborate on from a shipping perspective. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start off, Caroline, if that's okay. So as far as sure. the box collection and shipping data entry, which we didn't touch on today, we just went the ship pick process, but shipping data entry does allow you to um, keep track of items on the box detail level. So what items did go in what box number? Um, and that's the only thing we do collect. We don't worry about box size or anything else like that. That's more, I think, you know, after the fact with, with Caroline, but we do collect box number, what items go in what box. And that translates back into shipping data entry and Sage. And then, uh, Caroline, I'll let you, you take up from here. Yeah, and then on the Starship side, we do have um, package details that you can define in Starship where you can um, say, you know, name it whatever box it is that you have uh, that you use frequently and then put the dimensions that are associated to that box within Starship. Um, 
so that can all be done. Um, and then you just select it within Starship as far as the packaging, and then the DIMMs will automatically be selected so that you're getting the appropriate rates from the carriers for those dimensional, um, any dimensional packages, which can, um, you know, have a huge impact on your financials, especially with the changes that the carriers have been making in recent years with uh, the dim, dim weight changes. So all of that can be handled um, through Starship as far as the dimensions themselves. And I do have a question up on the screen, another uh, poll, and this is our last poll. I'm only going to offer two polls for you for this webinar, but if you can take a second to answer this one, are you interested in learning more about any of the following? Uh, that'd be great if we could get your feedback there. And we do have a few more questions. A uh, question for Russ. Russ does a uh, Sage Inventory Advisor push information back into Sage, such as min max info? Thank you, Shrell. Yep, yep. good question. Uh, by default, it will only create a purchase order. That's the only data that typically is going back into the Sage 100. But we do have the ability to take to grab the data for lead times and mid maxes and some of those kinds of things that we have had requests from some customers. And so using a visual integrator or some other tool, we can certainly have jobs or import jobs that can take that data as well. So we could do that by default out of the box. We're only typically creating an open purchase order. And we have a question from Kelly. Kelly, thank you so much for your question. I have a question about how to integrate our current customer database with customers using the website. Do we provide them with a user ID based on their customer number in Sage? If not, how does the system know if the customer is existing or is new in Sage? Worried about duplicate customers being created. So, I mean, you can kind of control that to a certain degree. Um, you know, you can decide to require them to create the customer through you first and have that approved so that you don't end up in that situation. So you provide them with their user ID. Um, or we can have a match check against other fields to see if they are an existing duplicate. So there's different ways to handle it depending on, on what you think is best for you and your customer. And we have a question from Susan. Uh, this one's for you, Caroline, with Starship. Can you configure a packing list that shows what is in each box for a multi-box shipment? Yes. So the packing slips that you saw during the demo were specific to that particular box. Um, so you would have, you know, whatever you've defined with the Scanco solution, um, as far as the items in that box, that would be printed um, along with the shipping label. So it would just be those items in the box. Um, just in case others are interested in the packing slip, we do have a shipment level pack slip that will provide one label for all the items if you prefer to go that method. Um, but uh, what you're referring to in your question is the package level packing slip, which would be just the items in that box. So both of those can be done. Perfect. Well, thank you. I'm going to go ahead and um, sh close out this poll. It looks like 64% of you have voted. Thank you so much for taking time out to do that. I'm going to close out and share the results of that poll. Looks like 29% of you are interested in website pipeline, 36% Starship, 43% uh, Sage Inventory Advisor, 50% um, American Payment Solutions, and 36% of you are interested in one software. Um, thank you, everybody, for your presentation today and for the audience for joining us. We really appreciate your time. I know we're a little bit over. I did record this webinar, and I'm going to be sending it out to everyone who registered and attended so that you can uh, go ahead and review the information at your leisure. And we just thank you so much for your support of ERPVAR and uh, of your Sage 100 system and and attending these webinars. So I'm going to go ahead and let the uh, presenters, if you guys have any closing comments. Nothing here, just appreciate everybody's time. Look forward to talking to those of you that have an interest. Yeah, please reach out with any questions and we'll be glad to uh, facilitate and kind of, you know, go into a deeper dive with anything that you'd like some further information on. And I'm going to go ahead and flash up the uh, contact information just in case everybody wants to 
take down the information. This will also be on the video recording that's sent to you. So uh, I wanted to highlight that uh, there is a little bit of a staff reorganization over at Starship. So Ryan Comones uh, is the uh, person that will be responsible for Starship now. He supports Caroline. Caroline's the VP of Sales and Marketing. So they're both accessible to you uh, for any questions in regard to Starship. So, and Adrian, a minor typo on my contact info there. Uh, we have an odd URL. It's not .com. It's actually .co. So if you need to get it to me, it's russ at netstock.co. Uh, perfect. I always uh, seem to forget that minor detail, but it's major when you're trying to get to uh, get in touch with someone <laughs> via email. Know. That won't work. But um, just it won't you, work. Yeah. Russ, can they also purchase directly yeah. from Sage, the Sage Inventory Advisor, or from their reseller? Yeah, that's actually the only way it, it gets sold is actually directly through Sage. Your reseller can certainly reach out to Sage uh, and be part of that process. Uh, but yes, it is sold directly by Sage, actually, because it's a subscription type of model. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Everybody take care, and we hope to see you on our next webinar. Thanks, okay. everybody. All right, bye-bye. Thank you all. Have a good bye -bye. day.